someone who's retired, Dave, uh, but still churning out albums like he's not. Logic. Uh, you didn't believe he was retired, right? No. So we talked about No Pressure back in 2020, and it was, I think, an impressive work because it was some of the best songwriting we had heard from Logic in some time, while also matching that with the best type of production for Logic. At this point, we know that he sounds much better on Dusty Ass Boom Bap than he does on 808 Trap Beats. That is very clear. And then just last year, Bobby Tarantino 3 comes back. First post-retirement album as a cup. Not only is Logic uh, back from the brink already, but he's back on some modern day beats. And guess what? It's like so whatever music because he just doesn't stand out when he's on that kind of production. And it was like, huh, this is probably because he's still signed the Def Jam and has late albums he needs to make. Cool. Okay. You know what? He is far from the first rapper to fake retire. It's not actually that big a deal. Whatever. You know what? Then you hear uh, our new record here, Vinyl Days, album uh, seven, is it, for Logic? I think Yeah, so. seventh album. Of course, he has many mixtapes as well. And he confirms, yep, this is his final Def Jam record. So these are definitely obligations, these last two records. And then anything from here on out will be logic on a new deal or independent TBD there. Um, so I, I, I um, didn't actually check out the singles coming into Vinyl Days. There was a few that came out. But uh, judging by the track list, which he let out and the guests on the track list, I was like, you know what? This is probably more in line with the logic I like, which is, again, on dustier, more traditional, you know, 90s hip hop stuff. And that's more or less what this is, which is great, you know, and yeah, it's 30, 30 tracks. It's way too long. Yeah. Um, 30 tracks, 70 minutes. Most of the songs aren't that long, but no. too many, too many tracks. Yeah, I wonder if Def Jam was like, hey, can you give us as many songs as possible before you leave us? You know, <laughs> probably not. But that, that's what that's what I decided to think. But yeah, like it's obviously like it's like way too long, like as a record. But it, it, this would probably feel like better if this was like classified as mixtape logic you know here's just this run of old songs you know like this was young sinatra five or something that's not what it is but i think there's some like solid stuff here i think more than anything though logic lyrically there's nothing on this that i heard that impressed me the way some of no pressure did and i think ly lyrically songwriting wise logic is just very inconsistent and that's ultimately what holds him back because he has ability he has an ear for production sometimes but like he's just as a performer uh, he's just a bit inconsistent to like, I think, kind of change his status where he is in hip hop. And obviously that doesn't really matter because he's a very successful guy. And I think one of the best parts about Vinyl Days is when I kind of talked about his like growing relationship with criticism and how he learned to not take as much offense to comments people or critics would make. And it's like, yeah, I guess that shows some growth. But I think overall, again, the inconsistency with the songwriting is what kind of has been holding me back lately. But I still like this way more than I like anything on Bobby Tarantino 3. Yeah, 100%. Uh, I thought this was actually a pretty like pleasurable listen. And like you said, him kind of going back to that 90s production was a great choice. And making this 30-track album with these short songs that all kind of flow into each other. And um, I, I even think some of the um like interludes or like skits are like right. kind of like fun uh i the michael rapport one i had to skip through but um i liked how <laughs> that was actually it, one of my favorite ones <laughs> I, I just i can't i can't stand michael rapport so I yeah just, that's I, fair I, I couldn't listen to him it was on but, brand yeah it's very on brand uh i heard him like for like 10 seconds like i, I just have to move forward but i just yeah. i, I thought it was like it, five or six of these skits so technically it's not a 30 track album if you really think about it <laughs> yeah and, and i thought it was just like it was like mid-level logic which is such a step up from where he has been that i was like oh is logic back like is logic kind of rounding yeah. back into form and so i i think my takeaway from this is like if he's kind of finding his groove again as he's coming off this this deal with def jam great maybe this will allow him to just kind of like be him and continue to like explore the sound that works for him um i i, I agree with you i think his the I think lyrically he's very up and down on this and even yeah. like some of the messaging he's going for, you know, this is a rapper whose biggest song is about the suicide prevention lifeline and on uh, therapy music. He like 
is like, I told people to go to therapy, but they didn't know. I'm my own therapist. And I was like, well, what's the message you're sending? Like, I don't really know what you're trying <laughs> a, to say. Just not good lines. That's all yeah. it is, you know? <laughs> it's, just, it's just like, I don't, it's just confusing and just not well done. So, um, you know, it's up and down, but I, I thought, I thought some of these songs were pretty fun, especially the like first, I don't know, I think like six or seven tracks I thought flowed together mm-hmm. really well and like move was a good like opener near the end i think i was just getting a little exhausted but tell yeah. me what stood out to you what tracks did you enjoy yeah i mean right off the bat you know you hear uh on a uh, danger you hear morgan freeman briefly it's, you know what i think we just have to put a moratorium on morgan freeman on hip-hop albums because metro boomin and 21 savage just did it really good in <laughs> savage mode too and you know what you're just kind of biting them if you use yeah. them right now that's how i felt about that lame but <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know, I think it's, um, right off the bat, like, with Tetris from here on there on now, it's like, yeah, it's like, this is more of a, you know, Sinatra old school logic vibe, and you have kind of, you have Funk Flex on here pretty routinely as, like, an MC dropping in and out, kind of sounded like he was added in post, and I don't think it's as effective as, say, DJ Drama being on Call Me If You Get Lost from Tyler the Creator, nevertheless, it's kind of fun. To hear flex just being like you know bars and doing his things, <laughs> dropping bombs um yeah like and i, I think that's a th- the th- overall thing is like i don't know if i like i like loved any of these songs as much as i like some older like boom bap logic stuff to be honest um but it was more just about an appreciation that's like you know what like he's at least like like you said kind of rounding back into form and He's a guy who's made like a dozen projects. He's made a ton of music, so I guess yeah. it does make sense. It's going to be up and down. If you know, if you're not like a classic MC, I guess yeah, you're going to be a bit up and down. And for him, it's just so easy to like decide. It's like, oh yes, modern beats, bad. Old school beats, good. You know, it's like the paradigm of logic music is often very easy to understand. <laughs> um, but like you said, like I, I think some 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 of the songwriting is kind of a bit. Uh, a bit off you mentioned the, the stuff on therapy music which feels like a weird postscript to 1-800 i also thought black white boy was kind of a similar yeah. thing where it's like you know what Lo- you know bobby biracial Lo- logic talking about that it's n- not new material but like i don't know like kind of flippantly talking about the fact that yes you get the pass as white and it's like tremendous privilege to you <laughs> like i don't know you know it's just 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 doesn't seem that intelligent to me but like yeah. I wouldn't be as offended, but like that's the problem is logic puts a lot of seriousness in his his wittiness. So you have to actually take him at his word on it and like, you know, tell you know, say when it's not up to snuff. Um yeah, I, I think that I think that's that's just kind of the thing where it's like you know, I think the other the other issue with therapy music is it has fucking Russ on it and Russ yeah. and Logic being together, two of the most self serious people in the game, it's like Ooh, that's a, that's perhaps the stuff of nightmares. I, Russ ultimately wasn't that bad, but like going in, I was like, oh no, that song could be terrible. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a good uh, point on Black White Boy. I, the the thing that disappointed me most about that was that was probably one of my like favorite beats off the album. Yeah. You know, it it like just drives forward so so well, like and so hard, and it has like that like uh like clicking in the background, that like uh, electronic clicking. I just really love it, and it's like ah, that's. That's what you waste this on, but uh, whatever. What do you think of La Donda? Like I, I don't know that one. I I was like some fantano this... lines on there. Yeah, I was like, is this just like a pure like Kanye play? Like I was right. Well, really I think it, I think going. another issue with Logic these days, which is it's not the number one issue, but like he has a bit of like Eminem syndrome these days, where he's like, let me cram as many syllables in as I can. Yeah, as if that somehow makes the music good, you know. It's just like it's just like a wire has been crossed, and it's like Logic needs to spit as much as he possibly can, you know. And it's like, nah, man, you didn't do this before, and the other stuff before was better than this. So don't know what it is, man, but I think it's you. <laughs> and then the other side of things, it's like you know what, Bobby Tarantino three coming back. You hear decades towards the beginning. Logic starts singing a little bit. You're not that guy, pal. This isn't you. You're not that uh, guy, pal. No. Trust me. Yeah, so, like, I, I think the rapping ass rapping stuff is what I like the most. You know, it's cool to see um, Big Lembo and C. Doc Castro back again. Of course, they're collaborators of his that were on some of my favorite songs, like uh, Young Jesus and Ballin'. You know, like, he's worked with those guys before. I don't know if Kick Style is 
you know, anything too special, but it's cool to see those guys there. I enjoyed hearing RZA on Portal 1, mm-hmm. but it, then it reminded me of Wu-Tang Forever on Young Sinatra 4, because the RZA verse on that song is, like, so fucking good. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. It's so much better than this one, you know? So uh, I, I'm more than anything just kind of curious if he will actually give us that Ultra 85 album he's been hyping, seemingly under his new deal, because... I'm just I'm just kind of looking forward to seeing what that is next because, you know, a song like Decades doesn't do it for me. I, I don't think that's a, that's a lane to go down. You hear the song Breath Control with Wiz, you know, definitely a more modern song. Um, you know, Indica Badu, perhaps one of the better Bobby Tarantino 2 songs, also featuring Wiz. They're about to go on tour together. It makes sense that they're making another song. But, like, I think Logic being traditionalist is what sets him apart you know, not that he's the only one who does that these days, but it just seems to be like the best feature of his music um, in terms of his musical identity, right? Bobby Tarantino stuff has definitely proven that. So I don't know, like we talked about this with No Pressure where like Logic finding just immense fame and fortune has kind of left him with nothing left to say. And um, it's not as bad as it was on the Bobby Tarantino stuff, but like, like, well, you know, like when he's just doing like flex, flex, you know, uh, I got paper stuff. It's just, it's not good. On the other hand, though, he like will make fun of that kind of music on vinyl days. So I was like, no, bro, like there's nothing wrong with that kind of rap. You just don't make it well. You yeah. know, <laughs> that is, it's two different things. Well, Dave, I, I, I don't really have much more to say about Logic. I'm, I'm hoping whatever we get from him next continues to like move in the right direction for him. But yeah. Uh, you know, it's just weird to like think about where he was and where he is now. Bit of a fall off. 